Welcome, my friends, to today's episode. We're fixing to have lots of fun. The name of the game is What Do You Save Before You Get Blistered and Run? We've hidden some fires around your home that'll rain from below and above. The essence of time sharply in focus, instincts, instant catalog of love. Clock's already started, the curtain's ablaze, no time to interpret the rules. This is your chance to choose what you love, your kids, your records, your tools. Don't think too much, just charge right in, grab whatever you can see. The roof is on fire, the carpet is melting. What you think, folks, what'll it be? (laughs) Don't ever tell me one of your dreams again. (laughs) You are listening to Two Friends, Two Poems, a podcast where friends read poetry to each other just to see what happens. My name's Tom, this was my idea, and I'm going to be reading poetry with my friend Paul. I've known Paul since we were in college, and no one appreciates an awkward moment like Paul. So when I got the idea for this, and it made me cringe, I knew who to call. All right, here we go. Let's read some poetry. Speaking of not depressing, let's just segue right into it. Here's, uh, I'll go first, is that all right? That that's all right. Wait, are you you're gonna? gonna sh- I want to I want to do Shakespeare. Let's do our let's do our originals last. How about that? Or what do you think? Um, yeah, let's. It. We can do it however we want. I didn't think this through. Well, yeah, I I think it's just my. Uh, uh, I mean, God, to lead with Shakespeare and then finish with Natal. with some something I wrote is <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny how I thought of this in the car, obviously. And I was like, I knew you would do it. But now that we're like sitting here about to read poems to each other, it's it it feels I there's some energy. I feel I feel there's there's a chemical thing happening in my brain. I'm I'm I've got some excitement. Well, no, I I don't want to think about it too much either. No. I uh I think let's lead with Shakespeare. For inspiration, for something to aspire to. Let's see, which one was I gonna read? Oh, this is it. This is Sonnet 35. No more be grieved at that which thou hast done. Roses have thorns and silver fountains, mud. Clouds and eclipses stain both moon and sun, and loathsome canker lives in sweetest bud. All men make faults, and even I in this, authorizing thy trespass with compare, myself corrupting, salving thy amiss, excusing thy sins more than thy sins are. For to thy sensual fault I bring incense. Thy adverse party is thy advocate, and against myself a lawful plea commence. Such civil war is in my love and hate that I an accessory needs must be to that sweet thief which sourly robs from me. Why why did you want to start with that one? I don't know. <laughs> I there was so, let me, I'm glad you asked. Let's see. I think the first line I was just this is I don't know if we took the same English literature class in college, but it was Tippins. This is this this is the Norton anthology from that class. Um because that, that was the weird parameter I gave myself. Is like, I don't want to look up a poem just for the recording. I want it to be something on my bookshelf. Mm-hmm. And the truth is, I don't have a lot of poetry on my bookshelf. So maybe this will lead to more. But I think the first line of this one jumped out to me. No, uh, no more be grieved at that which thou hast done. 
Mm. That's kind of a, that'd be a good daily affirmation for me. As if, because I, I, I'm just so accustomed to regret. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Um, cool. So, did you bring, so what did you bring to read? All right. Well, so I brought, I brought a, uh, a Denver poet. Great. Um, and, uh, I, I actually, I heard this poem first read on the radio on uh, Colorado public radio. Cause I'm that kind of nerd. Mm -hmm. And then it showed up again in, um, this is their premier issue. Uh, I found a magazine at, a at a, um, you know, burrito shop for, for hippies called Denver's. Mm -hmm. So it might be one, uh, that, that we'll start submitting stuff to when they're saying who's featured here. It, it says Susie Q Smith is an award winning poet, author, interdisciplinary artist, music maker, and dreamer of dreams who lives in Denver, Colorado. And the poem is downtown is dead. Even the pigeons don't go down there anymore. My reflection in the buildings looks like a ghost. The city killed the pigeons off, put up spikes. They just built nests in, put up poison, sent them flying in circles until they got lost or dropped dead. The city was tired of their crap, cleaning it over and over. The city hates its poor, and everyone knows pigeons are poor man's doves. The city does not have doves. The city announced last year it was time to start killing the geese. They were becoming a nuisance, so common, so everywhere. The city would rather have an ostrich or an emu, a road runner but only if it owns a home. I keep looking for the pigeons, the lavender gray fringes, the smoky white tufts, the free range yolky eyes watching back while they peck and gather and peck and gather. No one else even notices they're gone, which of course feels like a test. Who else am I supposed to share these sideway glances with? How else? Do you keep time? How else do you know where you are, if not for the birds singing you the chorus of a place, showing you its colors, saying, yes, we see you. You're here. And I am here. I am. 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 Yeah, um, cool. And the thing I wanted to do was we each have our own poem, correct? We each have our own poem, yeah. Um, would you mind going ahead? I will go ahead. All right, go for it. All right. This is called New Revised American Canon. The liturgist walks to the lectern before the congregation. Today's media will play from our holy scripture, of which every dot of the I and cross of the T was inspired by the Lord. Thanks be to God. Looking out into the congregation. Who today is inspired to suggest a passage? Play something from 1 Corinthians. Give me that old time religion. I'd like something by any Nick. Nick Jonas. Nick Drake. 
Nicki Minaj. Play Freebird. Play the new revised American version of Gangnam Style that we might believe in heartily mime gallop. Play the people something new. New? We may as well go gambling. Ah, dang it. Or make art. Ah, dang it. The body and the blood. Ah, dang it. I said old E with an E on the end. Play Pop-Tart Cat. It's Nyan Cat, you idiot. It's Momo Cat, you heretic. Play that old one by Amos about loving justice, mercy, and infinitely scrolling humbly with the Lord. Visit upon us the wisdom of the honey badger. Shh. The liturgist holds up her hand. The congregation becomes silent. Listen with your ears and see with your eyes. The honey badger from archive 37 file. 1004. Behold the honey badger. It really doesn't give a shit. He takes what he wants. They're so nasty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs> the congregation said amen. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Thank you. Uh, this has been Two Friends, Two Poems, a podcast where two friends read poetry to each other just to see what happens. Today's episode featured works by your hosts Tom and Paul, as well as English poet William Shakespeare, heard of him, and Denver artist Susie Q. Smith. You can learn more about Susie Q. Smith at suzyqsmith.com that's s u z i q s m i t h.com and to read more of tom's poetry and other writing follow him on medium or visit his patreon at patreon.com/tomward thanks for listening